It is very common for new gardeners to believe that every problem in their garden has got to do with a nutrient deficiency. And a lot of the information available leads people to this assumption. It's very common that people come into my shop and tell me they have a boron deficiency because they've looked at a leaf on the internet or in a book that looks like leaves on their plant material. 99% of the time, this is not the case. The fertilizer that is being sold on the market these days is the best in the world. And for the most part, uh, everything that plants need is entirely available to them. There are other factors that limit growth that can cause what appears as a nutrient deficiency. But it may not be because that nutrient is not present or not available. It may be because other parts of the plant's metabolic process are limited. So this is something that we have to dispel the myths on. Everyone needs to understand how plants work. What we need to do is gain in our minds the model of a healthy plant so that whenever we're going in our grow room, we can compare what we're looking at to the healthy plant model. So what's happening inside of a plant when a plant is growing, right? It is pulling an unbroken chain of water from the root zone and evaporating it into the environment. This is how plants stay standing. This is how plants reach for light. As that water is pulled up, nutrient is taken with it, which is then metabolized in the presence of light energy and water into sugars and starches, which the plant moves throughout its body and stores and uses to facilitate its metabolic growth process. So we have to look at our plant and say, is there something limiting water uptake? For instance, a humidity in excess of 80%, like let's say we have a humidity of 90% in the grow room, that could lay like a blanket, a wet blanket on top of our plant material, reducing transpiration. Let's say our grow room is 35% humidity. At that humidity, the stomata of the plant are actually going to start to close because the transpiration rate that is induced is so aggressive, the plant keep up, can't keep up. So it's actually going to start to shut down photosynthesis because the humidity is too low. Let's say we could potentially be overwatering our medium. And that's going to, if the medium never dries out, then that's going to limit the plant's water uptake. We could be looking at potentially a plant that has root disease. Another occurrence that happens when we overwater. Uh, oxygen content in the medium goes down, disease content goes up, the roots become brown and mushy, they can no longer take up nutrient, therefore we're going to see all kinds of nutrient deficiencies when actually the root zone was not kept healthy enough to facilitate the nutrient uptake required to complete its metabolic processes. Uh, for instance, in a scenario where we're enriching the garden with super high levels of CO2, uh, we could potentially not be feeding enough. And all of these scenarios that I'm presenting are meant to lead you to a common sense approach to analyzing problems in your garden. I want you to understand how plants work and I want you to keep this in mind when you're troubleshooting these problems. If you're using the best food in the world and you're checking your parts per million, it's not likely that you're gonna have a nutrient deficiency. It's more likely that your plant is compromised by either weak genetics, a virus, or some type of disease. So keep learning, understand how plants work, acquire the working model of a healthy plant in your mind so that you can compare the problems you're looking at in your grow room to the ideal plant, and you will very quickly see where the limiting growth factor is.